Good afternoon, everyone. I do hope this video file finds you well. I am speaking to you today from my classroom in noise with the help of Gildam. It certainly goes without saying that these are very trying times for this community, our nation, and indeed the entire world. Each and every day I wake up thinking it is all a bad dream. It has indeed been hard, but I am excited to start working again to connect with all of you. The same goes for the capstone teaching team. Mrs. Heisen, who has done incredible work on creating the curriculum for the course, Mr. Kearney, Ms. Cochran, and Mr. Fig. As the Healy Scholars Program has laid out for this community in the past, with grit and grace, Lawrenceville has faced and overcome depressions, disasters, terrorism, pandemics, and wars that have struck this great nation. We face these challenges together. We did so by finding new ways for students and faculty to support and to care for each other. We are certainly living through another difficult and trying moment right now. I hope we can all draw strength from being part of a community that always comes together when the road ahead is long and layered with obstacles. Now for the task at hand. Since its inception, the Senior Capstone has been a course about a citizen's duty to think deeply about questions that do not have obvious answers and are open to debate. We as teachers want a free exchange of ideas. We will read widely what others think, including those who disagree with us. To borrow a phrase from Abraham Lincoln, the better angels of our nature needs to be on display. We will talk back and forth among ourselves and then write down our individual conclusions for others to consider carefully and perhaps to challenge thoughtfully. We can all be served to remember this phrase from Daniel Patrick Moynihan. Everyone is entitled to his own opinion, but not to his own facts. Our goal as instructors is to encourage you to come to considered judgments about contemporary public issues the course also intends to sharpen your writing and speaking skills to aid your active participation in public affairs, indeed throughout your life. The paying of attention, the expression of informed opinions, and the exercising of the right to vote in November are obligations of citizenship we hope you take seriously. Capstone, then, is about what Lawrenceville itself is much about, citizenship and public affairs. This term we will embark upon an examination of the 2020 election. If recent history has taught us anything about our politics, this will be a roller coaster of an election. We are indeed a divided country. As a nation, we are at odds over the meaning of our past and who is and who is not an American. Right now, we are engaged across the country with an effort to balance community and individualism, wealth and health, and state versus federal authority. We also have unprecedented questions right now about individual privacy. In order to combat this outbreak, our movements need to be known, our information disclosed. These issues, among others, will inform public discourse from now until November. Americans are looking for leadership at all levels of government, from county clerks, mayors of small municipalities, leaders of large cities, governors, members of Congress, and the President of the United States. As I speak to you today, we are on a truly unprecedented collision course between the White House and state governors especially in the Northeast, overbalancing public health and the health of the economy. Indeed, it appears that in the weeks to come, the battle over COVID-19 will become hotly politicized. As we get ready to embark on our journey, we encourage you to think of what you have learned about the presidency last year in themes and honors U.S. history. Think back to Andrew Jackson's war against the banks, Lincoln, Lincoln's steady hand during the Civil War, Theodore Roosevelt's battle against the trusts, the Wilsonian rhetoric of peace and self-determination during World War I, FDR's assurances to the American public in his fireside chats during the depths of the Great Depression, JFK's clarion calls for civil rights in the 1960s, Reagan's demand for a wall to come down in Eastern Europe at the end of the 1980s, and closer to our time, Barack Obama's use of hope as a driving ideology in his campaign and his ringing call for an end to a divided America. Perhaps no form of government, declared historian author Schlesinger Jr., needs great leaders as much as democracy. For democracy is not self-executing. It takes leadership to bring democracy to life. Great democratic leaders are visionaries. In reflecting on the presidency, LBJ remarked that the burden of his responsibility literally opened up his soul. No longer could he accept matters as given. No longer could he write off hopes and needs as impossible. Certainly words for us to reflect on as we contemplate our choice in 2020. So how will we start off this online course for you this term? This week you will watch and engage with a lecture by Syracuse University professor Christy Anderson, 
Professor Anderson will bring you up to speed on where we are to date in the election process and offer food for thought on where we are going. You will engage with Professor Anderson's lecture as you will throughout the term on the Haiku Discussion Forum Board. We ask you to take this work seriously. Consider carefully before posting and remember that you cannot delete a Haiku post once uploaded. We would like you to comment thoughtfully and respectfully on a post made by a peer. This too will be a norm for the term. After the Anderson Lecture, we will move to a unit covering the Obama years and the beginnings of the age of Trump using a series produced by PBS called America's Great Divide. Indeed, the rise of Donald Trump and the resilience of his public support has produced a singular American moment that we all need to grapple with. Next, we will turn to two lectures covering the state of American democracy. You will hear from Princeton University historian Julian Zelizer and Providence College political scientist William Hudson. After that, you will write a two to three page paper based on a prompt crafted by the teaching team. You will be required to engage with course units, so please take careful notes as you go through. Overall, the hope of the teaching team in this course, to borrow from philosopher Michael Sandel, rests with those who can summon the conviction and restraint to make sense of our condition and repair the civic life on which democracy depends. I look forward to our journey together over the next several months. Be safe and be well.